Okay, 10 minutes on the clock. So most drawings out there are actually symbols. Symbol for an eye, symbol for a hand, symbol for a big company. And we learn a lot of these symbols that we use in drawing when we're kids. Learning to design cool symbols is an art form in itself. However, if you want to draw with any sort of realism or create figurative art or landscapes or do illustration or create comics or cartoons or animations or games, you'll need to move past drawing symbols. Unfortunately, our brain's love of symbols can really distort our drawings. And you're probably thinking, why is this guy spending so long uh, talking about symbols? Time is ticking, chop, chop. It's because this issue, this problem with our brains distorting our drawings because of its love of symbols is probably one of the biggest challenges. It's one of the big reasons that learning to draw is so difficult. Learning to draw what you see is all about drawing what your eyes observe without the distortions from your brain and all those symbols. There's a famous book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which is all about this. And I'm not necessarily recommending that book, by the way, but an example of an exercise is you can turn the reference upside down and try to see it as a bunch of abstract shapes. I made up an exercise that works for this too. I personally think that my exercise is more useful because it's closer to what you actually do when you're drawing. Now, what you do is you first turn the reference into abstract shapes and then you just focus on drawing those abstract shapes. Now you can also sort of force your drawing to be based on what you see by using methods like measuring. So you can check the relative sizes of things that you see. And I'll be honest, sometimes this can feel tedious and make drawing feel like you're doing your geometry homework, but it's really useful. And the good news is that with experience, you'll need this less and less, and maybe not at all. Now you can do that with angles too. Hold up your pencil to the angle you see, and then to your drawing. And you can also use alignments, at checking what's lining up horizontally and what's lining up vertically. Now, a lot of people advocate for contour drawing, where you connect your eye and arm, and you try and draw the outlines as your eye scans over them. Other people advocate for grid drawing. You put a grid on the reference and then you have a grid on the paper where you're drawing. And then instead of drawing the whole thing, you copy each square and that keeps the symbols out because now you've basically got a bunch of little abstract squares to copy over. For me personally, I don't want to draw with perfect accuracy using painstaking measurements. I don't really want to use a grid and I don't really love contour drawing because it's going to make me pick up on details a little bit too much, little bumps and stuff like that. I want to use observations that I can combine with skills we're going to talk about in the rest of this video. What we've talked about so far is really about kind of learning to flatten what we're seeing into 2D shapes and then drawing those shapes as we see them. But we can actually also think in 3D even as we're drawing on a 2D surface and crucial to that is the skill of perspective. So there's a plane and as it turns away from your eyes, it appears narrower as it goes away from you. Now I've, I've noticed that a lot of artists kind of recoil at the idea of learning perspective, like, ah, it's not for me, it's not my style, it's not, not how I work. It's kind of like when I'm trying to brush my daughter's teeth. But we've got to open our minds to perspective because it's not just a technical exercise for drawing buildings and stuff. It's gonna help our artwork be more relatable. It's going to help people emotionally connect to our artwork, even though the study of it is kind of a bit boring sometimes. Uh, so yeah, you've got to approach it like when Maggie's getting her teeth brushed enthusiastically. So quite often in a scene, especially in a street scene or inside a building, a lot of the lines are parallel and lots of the lines are going to go to a single vanishing point. Sometimes they'll go to two vanishing points, depending on the angle you're viewing the objects from. And sometimes in a scene, you're gonna be seeing three vanishing points. It's really important to understand eye level and horizon lines. So lines that are parallel to the ground will converge to vanishing points on the horizon line. The level of that horizon line will be at the level of the eye that is viewing the scene. Or if it's a camera, the level of the camera lens that's taking the picture. Now here, Jared Cullum has drawn the buildings with proper perspective and also the characters too. And that's really important for making this scene work. But check this out. The perspective is way off, but the scene is still appealing. So I'm not saying you have to be a slave to perspective rules. In order to break the rules successfully like this though, 
I believe you need to learn and get good at those rules first because they are only being broken in a very selective and thoughtful way. Now you've probably seen people drawing with boxes and cylinders and stuff. Maybe you love it, maybe you hate it, it's like Marmite. So I used to hate Marmite and now I love Marmite because we can change, we can all change. And I used to hate drawing with boxes and cylinders and now I tolerate it because it's worth it. Now how can you do this when some stuff just isn't a box or a cylinder or a sphere? You have gotta to learn to cut through lots of extra bumps and bits to get to the underlying box or cylinder or whatever it is. And it's easiest to start with household objects which are already quite like a box or a cylinder there's cross contour lines or surface lines or wrapping lines, lines that wrap around the forms. And by drawing them, you really clearly show the form and how it's oriented. They're easier to apply to organic forms. They're one of the most useful skills in figure drawing, in my opinion. For shortening, and as a plane turns away from you, it appears shorter. So you might think of this as a foreshortened arm. But you know what? Just as the length of the arm is appearing shorter, Keep in mind that the shape going around the arm actually got wider. Values are how light or dark something is. So it could be because the color of the thing is dark, or it could be because there's just not much light hitting it, that it appears dark, or it could be both. So color is nice and everything, but it's the value, it's how light or dark it's gonna be in our drawing that really does the work in a picture, which is why black and white photos and movies still work, and you can draw without color and it still works. The key skill with values is learning to simplify away little variations to capture the big simple shapes like we did earlier. Now unfortunately, our brains like to tune in to little variations, so it's really hard to simplify them away because our brains are screaming at us that they're stronger than they are. So we have one direct light source. It's coming, light is coming straight out of it, coming down in straight lines. We have an object. It's hitting the object and lighting up this side. As the object's form turns away from the light, a form shadow is created. Now, the egg is also blocking light from hitting my hand right there. That's a cast shadow because the egg is casting the shadow onto my hand. So there's a form shadow where the form turns away from the light and then there's a cast shadow on my hand. Now, we have that direct light if I bring my hand up under the egg, can you see that? You see how it kind of lights up on the bottom? That's bounce light. There's light bouncing off my hand and hitting the bottom of the egg. So there's some bounce light there. Now it's useful to study and learn more about the things that you're really interested in drawing that you kind of want to specialize in. So if you want to draw faces, you might like to learn the planes of the Asaro head or the Riley rhythms. If you wanna draw figures or animals, you might wanna learn more about anatomy. If you wanna draw aeroplanes, you might wanna learn more about their structure and how they work and get more advanced with your perspective techniques. It's a good idea to learn to use your whole arm and shoulder rather than just your wrist and fingers and that's gonna create more confident and appealing lines. So one thing to do is probably best not to draw with your sketchbook or whatever flat on the desk. You wanna have it at an angle so it's perpendicular to your eyes and you can open up your posture and let your arm move around. Some materials are gonna let you use a different grip to the normal writing tripod grip. They'll let you use this overhand grip and that can help you to really focus on moving your whole arm. You can fill in areas of shade maybe with the side of the material or you can use hatching which is gonna be a dense patch of lines that are consistent so it kind of creates an area of shade. The hatched lines could be parallel or they could wrap around the surface of the form that they're on. You can also smudge some materials to create a sort of even layer of shade. I wouldn't recommend that unless you're more experienced. So composition and design, you know the design is where you make the image visually appealing and interesting and you inject your creativity and so in many ways, the other skills we've talked about are in service of these skills. But they're not specifically drawing skills because they also apply to painting or photography or creating any kind of image. And also I don't have time, so I'm just not gonna talk about them. But I believe that means that I have achieved my goal 
with time to spare, thank you very much. You can leave a comment if I've left anything out. I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of comments because I don't think I left anything out. Whew. Oh my God, I forgot gesture. If you wanna learn about the skills you need for figure drawing specifically and what order to learn them in, check out this video on the screen. For free figure drawing references like the ones in this video, there's a link below.